Many people know the story of the Good Samaritan, the good neighbor who comes to the aid of a stranger who's been beaten and robbed on the road to Jericho. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once traveled that road himself and described the 17 miles from Jerusalem to Jericho as dangerous, a steep and winding road that made it easy for people to prey on innocent travelers. On the one hand, Dr. King said, we are called to play the Good Samaritan on life's roadside, but that will be only an initial act. One day we must come to see that the whole Jericho Road must be transformed so that men and women will not be constantly beaten and robbed as they make their journey on life's highway. Our vision for One Heart is that it will transform the road for many of our neighbors living in poverty, leading to a better life. The guests will also play a huge role in transforming the road and their own lives. One Heart will serve single men and single women, single mothers and single fathers, unique family structures, for example, a grandparent with custody of her grandchildren, and unaccompanied youth, such as teens who age out of the foster care system. Homelessness in our community is often not what you think. Here are a few real-life examples of people in our community who have faced some real hardships. Names have been changed to protect their identities. Kayla moved to Rapid City from Minnesota as a teenager following the death of one parent and a falling out with the other. She was supposed to live with extended family here, but that didn't work out, and for a time, she was without a permanent home. Because she was a high school student, she received critical support from a McKinney-Vento advocate, whom she remains close with to this day. As a young adult, Kayla married and had a child, but the marriage ended following allegations of domestic abuse. She sought counseling services and other assistance to try to maintain some level of sanity and stability. Kayla is smart, articulate, beautiful, and talented, but years after her first bout with homelessness, her main method of transportation was a bicycle, simply because she couldn't afford a car, and she had a kid's trailer on the back for those times she had to take her child with her. Now, imagine for a moment how one heart could have changed the road for Kayla. She is making it, but imagine how much time and energy she spent just getting through each day. Given a smoother road, she was capable of doing incredible things much earlier in life. Robert is a single dad in his late 20s with one child. He is currently working delivering fast food. He wants to get an education, but struggles with finding childcare in an area of town accessible by bus. He wants to further his education, but he doesn't want to have to move in with friends or relatives when he goes back to school. John and Emily are a local couple with three kids. John works construction, so he doesn't work most of the winter. Emily works cleaning motels. They have been living with friends or family, but that is no longer an option. Emily can get a discounted rate at the motel where she works, but when tourist season comes, they're without a place to stay. John would like to acquire a skill so he can find year-round employment, and Emily would like to get her GED and then go to Western Dakota Tech for medical training, possibly to be a first responder. The motel is far from any school, so getting kids to school is a struggle. Sometimes their car works, sometimes it doesn't. Ariel is a single mother of a teenage daughter awaiting an organ transplant, who has struggled to keep the essentials in their household and survive. Her ability to create traditional Lakota beadwork barely kept them afloat, and spending hours at the hospital every week created hardship on their spirits. Ariel is a resilient and hardworking individual who not only earned her GED and Certified Nursing Assistance License, she is enrolled now in a licensed practical nursing program. Being able to tap into community resources, gain mentorship, and learn to navigate the world of work has kept her family from being on the streets. After a violent altercation with her longtime partner, Sarah packed up her four children and left for Arizona. Little did she know her ex would leave the apartment and the bills piling up in her name. Upon her return to Rapid City, Sarah could not get into subsidized housing or get help with utilities, and for a time, the family lived in her van. She worked as a housekeeper at a local hotel and worked to get her youngest children into childcare so she could pursue her dream of attending college. First, she had to gain a high school equivalency, deal with the aftermath of domestic violence and substance abuse, and learn how to access scholarships and higher education funds. 
After finding a mentor and clearing up some of the confusion from her move, Sarah has gained stability and will start college this fall. Without several supports from community service organizations, resuming the path to increased education would have been nearly impossible. David struggled with his parents' divorce as a child. He harmed himself and used illicit drugs before dropping out and leaving home. He spent a few months on the street and then decided to attend Job Corps in another state. His time there was short-lived, though, and he returned to Rapid City, where his father and stepmother were willing to take him in with conditions. Drug use and lack of ambition due to depression kept David from achieving, and he was back on the streets. He began to work diligently toward completion of his high school equivalency, tapped into mentorship opportunities, and sought help for his depression. David has finished his GED and is now developing his career pathway plan. Being a single mother at the age of 19 is a real struggle. If you add instability in housing and unfinished high school academics, it is a mix leading to hopelessness and poverty. Anna was in this situation and feeling unwanted and scared. She was living with relatives and in homes with as many as six adults and 12 children. She was working but only earned minimum wage and had no benefits. She worked a second job and still could not afford rent on her own. An adult male relative was watching her child, and she realized her toddler was being sexually abused. She ran from her living situation to a friend's home and finds the situation there to be equally hard. Anna's GED classes have been put on the back burner while she tries to work to afford an apartment. Friends are babysitting now, but she feels guilty because she is unable to spend time with her child and provide life's necessities. Emma is a full-time college student who aspires to work in the health field one day. Currently, she is on the verge of eviction due to financial hardship. She is a mother to an adolescent daughter and has multiple family obligations, including taking care of her chronically ill mother. Emma works part-time and is constantly worrying about making ends meet. All the financial hardships she faces hinder her academics in school. She continuously questions her ability to finish school. And on top of all that, as a Native American woman, she faces racially charged bias in both her school and workplace environments. Thanks to our provider partners, You Know Who You Are, who allowed us to share some of your clients' stories anonymously in hopes of showing others how many of our neighbors who struggle in the crisis of poverty want more out of life and are willing to work for it. Here's a quick recap of how One Heart can transform the road for many of our neighbors in need. First, the guest is referred to the One Heart campus by one of our provider partners. That guest works with a dedicated care coordinator to develop a plan for upward mobility. That means getting the life skills, job skills, or education that person needs to gain financial stability and more independence. The guest is supported as he or she works to rebuild their lives. The plan is continually modified and reassessed. This is not a one-size-fits-all approach. And finally, graduation. This means employment and housing in our community. It's time to change the road, and for many, that road begins at one heart.